Now, for more on this, Murad Dina joins us from Geneva, and he's the co-founder and president of the Rashad Movement, an Algerian opposition organization advocating for radical non-violent change in Algeria. Thanks so much for joining us, Murad. Now, as uh, you've heard, Algeria's National Army Chief has spoken for the first time since the protests began, and he said he won't allow a breakdown in security. Now, many have interpreted this as a veiled threat. What's your reaction? Hello. So, I don't think this is a threat. Uh, there is, you know, you have to understand the uh, position of the army in Algeria. Uh, we are used to this rhetoric. Uh, we also, if you look at the style, the way that he's reading a text, probably he didn't write it. So there are there have been even uh, instances in uh, two weeks before where he uh, made a speech which was afterward edited uh, on the official website of the army. So I think the army just want to remind sometimes the, the people that they are still there, that they are in control, which is a good thing. It's not it's not an issue. So uh, as long as they are there, there to to make sure that Algeria is safe, that they are. Uh, within their constitution, constitutional role, it's fine. And uh, uh, some people, at least in the streets, found it, a, found it a bit awkward that he was mentioning threats and terror. Uh, what is it about? I mean, these people in the street have been uh, nonviolent. They have been giving examples to the world about civilization, uh, nonviolence, and demanding clear political rights. So the issue is, uh, I mean, it's just like... Uh, reminding people of something they are longing for. I mean, people are, are very much attached and, and, and linked to the national security. Uh, they want safety for, of course, all of them. They want freedom. So, yeah, I, I think that nobody really cared about what he said today, not to ignore him, but it was just normal rhetoric from the military, I think. Okay, and uh, just one question uh, regarding where you are there in Europe. Um, how will Europe be looking at the events in Algeria right now? I think that the uh, European countries, especially those with close ties to, uh, to Algeria, at the top of the list would be, of course, France. They are, uh, I mean, clearly paralyzed by this situation. They don't know how to deal with it because they, they fear two things. Their, their policies towards Algeria was mainly uh, uh, linked to a domain of uh, very selfish interests, which were not fair to the Algerians, and also security-oriented. Uh, they viewed Algeria as a buffer uh, to, uh, to somehow, in their view, safeguard France from waves of immigrants, be they from Algeria or from the uh, Saharan region. And they do not know how to deal with the situation because they, are, they have been backing uh, the Algerian uh, government of Abdelaziz Bouteflika uh, within this framework, within this deal. They would give them uh, unlimited access to Algerian resources, economically speaking, strategically speaking. Let's not forget that uh, Abdelaziz Bouteflika gave unconditional access to uh, military aircrafts from France to go and, and bomb Mali. Uh, without really the Algerian people knowing why was that. And I think that now they don't know how to deal with it. They know that the, the protest, the, the real the need and the, the, the claim for the change from the, the street is now unambiguous mm -hmm. and, of course, will go okay. to its end. There will be deep changes in, in the country and they don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you say the protests now um, are unambiguous, it, so it doesn't look like these protests are going to stop anytime soon and uh, Bouteflika isn't going anywhere either. How do you see this progressing? I think that basically there is what I call an, an honorable and, and, and a respectful uh, way out for Bouteflika. I mean, he just have to admit that uh, it's game over, it's finished. So uh, either he would be part in uh, right now, not uh, in a time frame of a year or so, like he was claiming, because that was clearly refused one less than one hour after that was announced in the news. People took out to the street spontaneously by the hundreds of thousands, if not, if not millions, and saying, no, no, don't tell us that story again. We don't want you. We don't want your your, your, your team. We, we're, we're all fed up with that. We, we want the change and now. So he could be part of an immediate change, making it go easy. He can do that. And, and I think that the people would be um, would be thankful to him, and because they, they are somehow they do have some empathy for him. I mean, especially that he is sick, he is old, and so on. Uh, it's in the nature of the Algerian people to be good to those kinds of person. However, if he makes the mistake of going 
the wrong way politically, I'm afraid that he will be, uh, he will have, a, 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 I mean, a, a bad end. I mean, speaking for his, for his history, for his stature. Okay. And we really don't want that. We want a way out. And there is a way out. He, he has received okay. uh, lots of clear messages. So he can be, yes, right now, but I mean, I mean within hours or days, not a matter of even weeks or months. Uh, otherwise, I think the people have been clear about their demands. Murad, on that note, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Murad Dina, the uh, co-founder and president of the Rashad movement. Thank you very much indeed.